Quantum computing, although being a relatively young field, is actually quite complex and there's many different approaches being pursued around the world for building a quantum computer. At D-Wave, our approach is quantum annealing. And in this video, I'll explain what that is and how it relates to the other forms of quantum computing. So quantum annealing is basically a way of using the intrinsic effects of quantum physics to help you solve certain types of problems called optimization problems and also a related problem called probabilistic sampling. Now let me explain what these are. So an optimization problem is a problem where you are trying to search for the best configuration out of many, many different possible combinations. So an example of this is, say you're trying to build a house. You've got a fixed budget to spend, but there are many, many different things you, you'd like to have in your house. Maybe you can't afford them all. So the challenge is to find out what combination of all of those different things you can afford to fit into your house and maximize your happiness. So you can imagine spending your entire budget on a house which is great or you spend your entire budget and it's not quite so good. So an optimization problem is trying to find the best configuration. Um, the reason you can use physics to solve optimization problems is because you can frame them as a type of problem called an energy minimization problem. And like a fundamental part of physics is that everything's always trying to find its minimum energy state. So things slide down hills, or in thermodynamics, hot things cool down over time. And it's also true of quantum physics. So quantum annealing is um, using quantum physics to find the minimum energy state of something. So sampling problems are related to optimization problems, but they're slightly different. Instead of focusing on trying to find the minimum energy state, what you're trying to do is sample for many low energy states and try and characterize the, the shape of your energy landscape. This is useful for application areas like machine learning, where you're trying to build um, a, a probabilistic representation of the world. And these samples give you information about what your model is like now, and you can use those to improve your models over time. Optimization problems also crop up in, in machine learning. And typically sampling problems and optimization problems are very difficult to solve on, on classical computers. So there's a lot of interest in trying to find alternative techniques to solving these kinds of problems. So that's a description of quantum annealing and the kind of things it's used for. So how does it relate to the other forms of quantum computing? Well, the first form of quantum computing that was developed is called gate model quantum computing. And, um, and the differences between these two kinds are, can be summarized as follows. So in quantum annealing, what you're trying to do is harness the natural evolution of quantum states, although you don't have any control over that evolution. So you set up the problem at the beginning, you let quantum physics do its natural evolution, and the configuration at the end corresponds to the answer you're trying to find. In gate model quantum computing, the aim is a lot more ambitious. What you're trying to do there is be able to control and manipulate the evolution of that quantum state over time. Now, this is a lot more difficult because quantum systems tend to be incredibly delicate to work with. However, you can have, having that amount of control means that you can solve a bigger class of problems. So these differences are the reason why it's been possible to scale up quantum annealing processes to over a thousand qubits now, whereas the state of the art in gate model quantum computing is around 10 qubits. So it's technically a lot more difficult to get the qubits to work together coherently in a gate model quantum computer. However, there have been some very powerful algorithms developed for use when they reach scale. So a couple of examples are Shor's algorithm for factoring large numbers and also Grover's algorithm for searching through databases. These promise to be way, way faster than anything you could possibly run on a classical machine, given our current knowledge. So there have been some other approaches to quantum computing that have been shown to be equivalent to the gate model approach. And these are all known as universal quantum computers. So to be classified as a universal quantum computer, it needs to be shown that there's a mapping of 
the specialized gate model algorithms to these other forms that it doesn't take up too much time. So there's a polynomial time mapping and a polynomial resource mapping from the gate model approach to these other approaches. So quantum annealing isn't a universal quantum computer. However, it is related to one of the forms of universal quantum computers, a form called adiabatic quantum computing. In fact, adiabatic quantum computing is a specific form of quantum annealing, which also works on the process of energy minimization. So it's just to say that quantum annealing and universal quantum computers aren't completely separate entities. There is a, a, um, a link between them. So there I've described quantum annealing and the kind of things it's used for. In my next video, I'm going to explain um, how quantum annealing works.